Hey, it's David. Let's finish stripping the sportster down. Now, I did say that I was reluctant to remove the wiring loom because of the issues involved. But in cleaning it up and uh, looking at it more closely, I don't think I've really got a lot of choice. Um, whatever I do, this frame needs to come down to as near as bare as I can because there's quite a lot of little bits of rust and such. So the whole frame really needs to be looked at. So what I've done is I've put it on the lift so that it's up a little more at uh, eye level. What I really need to do now is to uh, remove the side stand. Right, that's a bit more secure. Uh, um, and now I can remove the spring quite easily and uh, we can get at the uh, pin to remove the side stand. Now the engine is going to leak a bit of oil but um, that's not really a big deal because it's only the residue um, from draining the engine. Okay, now that's the relatively easy part, getting the, circle, the uh, cotter pin out. Really not sure that I'm going to be able to uh, get this pin out because I think it's going to require leverage. Seems pretty stuck in there. It's probably going to have to be drifted out from the top after all. Let's see what we can do to strip the electrics out and remove the motor. So the electronics um, and the electrics of this bike, um, the core of the bike is here under the seat where all the fuses and uh, relays and such live. There's a main cable comes up to the front, which is primarily for the headlights and uh, instruments and uh, so forth. And there are a few other wires. There's this wire which goes down and it goes under and this is where all of the uh, sensors and uh, such live for the ignition and the oil pressure or, um, and so forth. They're all, they all go down and under so but they go under on the other side of the bike here so probably the best thing to do is to start at the front and remove here. Now this one that comes up here is for the coil. It has this is a, the, the basic coil. Um, you can see the remains of the uh, original plugs for the twin coil. This bike was originally fitted to has been um, butchered to uh, mount to this old style uh, coil for the points. So let's pull all of this off and uh, get it free to the back and then work our way back on the other side of the bike and uh, get it all done. Now I'm very much recording for my own sake here so that uh, when I come to put this back together I've got a guide as to uh, how it all works. So first things first, let's just unwrap everything that uh, I wrapped. Already unbolted. Right, so what we need to do first is disconnect the, uh, the coil. This uh, could stay connected to it, like the headlamp could, but the headlamp is going to come off as well. Um, but I might leave it on here just for now, uh, just so it's all together, because I've got to redo something with this headlight because bulb because it's rusty um, as well. So that needs something doing with it, if not replacing. So that needs to come out. Um, the only wire that's left through here, these ones are already out, is these plugs. Um, 
which need to come out of this tiny little hole here. And I have done it before. I think some of the plugs will come out. The headlamp, I think, if I remember rightly, you have to take apart this plug to get the wires out of here. So I'm gonna leave that just for a second. Let's get this coil out of the way. That also means removing all of the cable ties. Let's free the coil from the ignition switch. So coil is removed. Now sitting on the back of the what remains of the uh, top engine mount, there is the map sensor, which has the vacuum line from the carb, and uh, it's carb and petcock. I'm going to have to do something about this because, um, well, a the map sensor isn't being used as far as I'm aware, given I'm running points. Um, horn. Um, but also I'm replacing the, step, the stock petcock. So now we have the map sensor and we have all the headlights, units, ignition switch and so forth. Um, coil plug, as I say butchered, not being used. Um, I need to do something about this as well in the build because uh, this was just a temporary thing and the headlamp bucket wasn't in the right place and I really want to think about the idiot lights where they want to go. They were quite nice out the way but it would probably be better to relocate them somewhere else. We just got this one loom and it's free all the way back. To here so this now basically comes all the way out of here now we have this plug this plug is the uh, speedo Ah, uh, this is where the nightmare starts. Now here's a mystery plug that uh, no longer has a home. Um, I believe there is a sensor that the original electronic condition used. This is the live feed to the starter motor. So that's the uh, So the speedo connector. Now we've got some earths down here. These two plugs here are for the rear brake switch. And that's the battery earth. So let's see where these cables now go. Right, this line which goes down under the engine for all the various sensors there it goes past this mounting point for the oil tank. It's one of the uh, isolastic rubbers that uh, connect the oil tank. But just behind it, there's also a bolt that holds the oil tank on. And it's held on by a clip. And the clip is just in the way of removing that. Uh, it's, uh, I forget the name of the clips. It's the ones with a sort of have a nut on the end. Oh, it's just broken. So I need to get probably another one from Harley. Put that out of the way. That is now free. And uh, we can see there's a wire coming off here. There's another feed down here. And there are a couple of earth cables running here to the uh, engine mount. Let's have a look around the other side. Of the wires that come through this side from the loom that run across the top of the engine, there's 
switch for the uh, starter solenoid. It just has a, a press in. This cable here is the speedo sensor. Um, I've just pulled it through. So that doesn't need to come out with the loom because that stays with the engine. I'm not messing about with that side of it. Um, and we have to take off this cable here on the back of the starter solenoid. This is the main earth lead, but you've got the secondary uh, lead that earth, uh, mains lead that runs off that one. So we just need to pull this off. So that just leaves the earth cables connected to the engine mounting there, which I'm going to leave for the moment and uh, carry on tracing the wires down to the front. At the front of the bike, we've got this whole mass of cables uh, down here, which are really quite oily from the uh, leaking from the breather pipes. Now, one of these. Is the core wire. Most of them relate to the regulator rectifier. This one runs through your pressure, pressure switch which is located under the oil filter. I'm not quite sure how that's connected so I'm going to leave that until I've removed the uh, regulator rectifier and seen what's going on behind there because that will need to come off as well. The cable protector here is quite badly heat damaged. Now let's remove the regulator. It's stuck on the frame here, it needs to, it needs to come off. That's not good. Just disconnect these. Ah, and this is really quite fixed in place. So after much tugging, the connector came apart, but not in the way I don't uh, that I think it was supposed to. Um, well, I might see more if I look more closely, but. now the rectifier is off and uh, we can have a look at that uh, oil pressure switch to see how it's connected. So oil pressure switch came off. It was what I'd expected which is just a pull but it was on there quite tightly. So this means that uh, the initial part of this is now Free. This stays here because it uh, uh, goes to the engine and that leaves this wire here. It feeds onto a plug just behind the uh, front sprocket. All right. So that unplugs. So this leaves this front part uh, free. Now we just need to trace that back under the engine here and see where it goes. We have another unused plug under here. So it's part of the original ignition system, but no longer used. And then these 
feed. Past the oil line. Just with a tight squeeze. And up the back of the clutch housing. Now the only thing attaching the wiring loom to the bike is that uh, earth connection. So let's start with the first of the engine mounts. Okay, so that's got the uh, main earth lead on it. Let's get these nuts out without dropping them. And there's the other two earth wires. So I'm going to pull this main earth out at the same time. If I haven't forgotten anything. wiring loom. I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up here and uh, then we'll come back and look at the engine. Right rear engine mounts. There's a plate on the front but this uh, one here hides behind the oil line so it's not easy to get to. So it turns out the uh, front engine mounts, the rearward ones, uh, bolts for the mounts are in fact um, a through all the way uh, from the other side in the engine. explains why uh, I was having difficulty turning the spanner. That one is actually welded in place. So there are two spacers. It's not really clear where they go. It might, they seem to maybe sit um, on the inside of that uh, mounting bracket. Right, time to remove the gear linkage. So what this should mean is this engine is actually now free to lift out. Thank you. 
frame and engine, as you can see, are now out, apart. Um, kickstand doesn't want to come off, might try some heat to do that, otherwise I'll have to look at uh, what the possibilities are on replacement parts and uh, cut the pin out. That kickstand is too short for the current height of the frame off the ground anyway, so again something might need to be done there, but this needs to be cleaned up. I need to decide what it is I'm going to do. Am I going to get it coated, powder coated? Am I going to paint it? I don't know. Because there are issues with powder coating, things like I'm going to have to remove these, maybe, um, and that sort of stuff. So, got to give some thought to that. But there is quite a bit of rust here and there on the frame, only to be expected. Um, and uh, now the engine is out, I will have the chance to pull the cam cover off, pull the oil pump out, and have a look inside and see if there's any evidence of uh, metal shavings or other damage from blowing up the top end. Anyway, so this is success for today. So thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys again soon.